Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to SWF Shootout. I am, of course, your commentator, Puma. We're here in Tampa, Florida, and we've got a lot going on tonight. We are going to start things off with a Lone Star Championship tournament matchup. This is round two here tonight. We had a lot of interesting matches happen in round one, where this man took on Mason Foster, and each man had their team on the outside, the Sons of Carnage and the Fallen Kingdom. As you can see, this is Ryan Riley. He has advanced into the second round here after a victory over Mason Foster. I'm really interested to see how this is turning out now because as you can see here, Ryan doesn't have the Sons of Carnage backing him up. But he didn't really seem to need him in the last matchup. Is he gonna need him this time? Ryan Riley making his way down to the ring here to open up episode number two of Shootout. And we mixed up all the names as we said we were gonna do. There's four gentlemen left here in this tournament. We mixed up all those names. And then we drew the names and it turned out to, to fill out the bracket exactly as it was laid out. So Ryan Riley's opponent here tonight as he slowly makes his way up the ring onto the apron there. His, his opponent tonight's the money man. He uh, has a personal stake here in SWF. He has up, put up some of his own money to help keep us around, help us keep the lights on. All these blinking LEDs are not cheap, my friends. That is for sure. Ryan Riley, playing it cool as ever. But is it going to help? Is it going to work for him? Is it going to turn out to be in his favor? As Duke Zenda comes down to the ring. Longtime member of SWF. And there he is. The proprietor of Money, Inc. This man is from Duke my hometown Zenda. of Houston, Texas. Duke Zend is making his way down to the ring. And just like last week, these hundred dollar bills, these million dollar bills with his face on them, they're come raining down. And as I said, please don't try to spin these. You will probably get put in jail, I would assume. I know I saw Malcolm Black scrounging around picking up all these bills and I had to I had to tell him don't spend these use these things for warmth man Pablo Escobar this money put it in your fireplace Duke Zenda ladies and gentlemen Duke Zenda baby I love it Duke Zenda is going to take on Ryan Riley in our opening matchup here tonight we're going to start this tournament off right. The winner of this tournament faces the winner of the next matchup. And those two men will face off to face Tyler Jordan. In the center of the ring, big forearm. Oh, duck by Riley. Kick to the midsection. Holy cow. Ryan Riley quickly trying to end this. What a move that was. Good job by Riley. Kick to the midsection. Look at this. Hammerlock suplex there and Riley is putting it on quick and fast to Zenda here he's got Zenda by the back of the head taking him over to the turnbuckle no Zenda, Zenda's going to get out of it excuse me shots to the midsection get Riley off oh man the money ink leader here jawbreaker oh and just a brutality of Duke look at that okay slowly Decided he's going to get off of that. That could have been much worse for Riley, but he takes advantage of a nice shoulder block there. I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm interested to see how Riley reacts without Sons of Carnage in his corner. That is, of course, Jesse Newman and James Gaines III. And look at Duke. Oh, jeez. Holy cow. Went for that flipping move again. He didn't get all of it, but he got just enough get the job done oh 
Nice block there. Into the corner goes Riley. Uh-oh. Not the position you want to be in. All that blood rushing to your head. Look at this. Backstabber. Good Lord. From Duke Zend. Oh. Nice block of the kick right there. Absorbing all that, that, that pounds of force right into his chest. Oh, face first goes Duke. And Ryan Riley is taking Duke Zenda to the woodshed right here in the turnbuckle. Good Lord, the count of 10 sends Duke stumbling out to the center of the ring. My goodness. Riley knows what's at stake here. He is going all out. Oh, my. Insiguri right to the side of, the, of a kneeling Duke Zenda. Riley, no. Zenda's going to sh shut that down. Ducks. Look at this, Riley back on the offense here. Shots to the leg. On the turnbuckle, oh, excuse me, on the corner. Up and over again, the second time. Finishes it off with a nice Japanese arm drag. Oh, missing that basement drop kick. And catches an insiguri. Does Ryan Riley. Oh, look at this. And drops Riley on his head. My goodness, but Riley's quick. He is he knows where he's at. He's got that great ring awareness here. Look at this. That Riley Plex into a pin. One, two, no. Just as the hand hit down for two, Duke was able to get out of it. Oh boy. Duke stumbling up to his feet and a huge spear from Riley. Again, Riley going down for the pin. One, two. And another two count. Wow. As I said, Riley knows what's at stake here, but so does Duke. Quick up to the top rope. Goes Riley. Shooting star press onto the money man. Holy cow. Not going for the pin. And that might prove to be a mistake. Into the corner. Oh, boy. Oh. And just thrown like a sack of potatoes is Riley. Duke dragging Ryan up to his feet now. Look at this. Into the uh, the middle of the rope there. Up and a kick right to the side of the face. I was going to say that could do it, but Duke is calling. Jeez. Jeez, that jumping flatliner. One, two. And just like that. Money Inc. Duke Zenda catches Riley with that jumping flatliner. Duke Zenda, baby. He is your winner. He is the first person to head into the finals. He's going to face the winner of SDC and Vice. And the winner of that match heads on to face Tyler Jordan. Well, folks, it looks like Alex Corzo is back in SWF and look at him running down to the ring. He is not happy about something. Look at it. This man is fired up. So Alex Corzo wasn't initially in the in the reveal of a SWF shootout here. It wasn't clear whether or not he was going to be back with us. But it is very clear now. And the former Rebellion champion is cranked up folks I don't know uh, what he's got to say now this is kind of unannounced I don't have anything here in my notes that says Corzo was gonna come out here tonight but you know he's here now so I don't think he's got a match scheduled um, I, don't, I don't quite know what's going on here but it okay looks like he's gonna get a microphone folks so Alex has got the, the mic. Let, let's hear what he's got to say.
Well, I can't say that I blame Alex Corzo for having these particular feelings. As I mentioned, he is the former Rebellion champion, and he wants to know where his title shot is, or where his title is, I should say. And he wants Silent Jordan. Good grief. Well, coming up next yes, in the tournament for that Lone Star Championship that Siler Jordan holds, it is the longest member of SWF. It is Vice. Vice got his victory over Ryan Adams in the previous episode. On the previous episode of Shootout, Vice the greatest there on his shirt. You know, Alex, Alex Corzo has a great point. Where is his uh, where's his title? And as I said, it wasn't clear whether or not he was even going to come back to SWF. And when he made that clear, when it was confirmed, then, you, you know, choices have already been made. But he wants his title. I don't, again, I don't blame him. But how is that going to happen? We're having this tournament right now for the number one contender to face Tyler Jordan at the pay-per-view. And I'm not totally sure how Alex is going to fit into that. I'm sure we'll find out, that's for sure. So here we go. Vice, ladies and gentlemen. He is fired up. These fans giving him the what for. Not too happy with uh, the visual of Vice in their ring. The fans really booing, giving, him, giving it back to him here. So... Like I said, Vice beat Ryan Adams. That was a hell of a match. If you missed it, please go back and check it out. But right now, Vice has got a bigger task at hand. This is uh, heading into the finals of this tournament. And he's got to face this man who beat James Frost last week. And James Frost is no slouch. He calls himself the hero of wrestling. The hero SDC. And look at, he is ready to go. He is fired up. He is gonna come down to this ring and I guess he's gonna try to show us why he belongs. I mean, he has done that somewhat already. But previously, in the previous season, SDC uh, teamed up with Dino D. They were a tag team, and they uh, only made it through a couple of matches before Dino decided to retire, and, and you know, he was able to uh, take that road, and we're happy for him. SDC then took on some, uh, had some singles matches, and did fairly decent, but right now, he's riding high. The winner of this matchup is going to go on and face Duke Zenda, who uh, defeated Leo McKay. And then Kid Hades and Leo McKay got into it in the back backstage area. Really, it was Kid Hades attacking Leo. And Leo being who he is, I've never seen him back down from a fight. Vice, uh, who's in this matchup, and Leo McKay had a hell of a rivalry in the previous season. Ending that with a Falls Count Anywhere matchup that ended up uh, over by the stage before the ref counted to three. And... And Kid Hades really took it to Leo, which is very surprising to me. So I'm interested to see what unfolds there. But right now we've got Vice and SDC, and Vice starts things off by getting his back broken and a side leg sweep. SDC came in. He saw that punch coming. Look at that nice body slam. Scoop slam, if you will. Vice with the legs. Oh, man, big kick to the back. I'm interested to see, um, I really, if I can be biased and root for somebody here, I'm rooting for Vice. The, the man has been loyal to the SWF brand, and I, I'm really hoping to see him prevail. Now, SDC, as a tag team uh, member, their tag team did halfway decent. As a singles competitor, again, halfway decent. So I'm really, really excited to see what happens here. Jeez Louise. What a jumping DDT that was over by the ropes. The fans really kind of booing this matchup. I don't I don't think that's quite fair. Vice takes SDC. Oh my goodness, and just throws him out of the ring. Vice, as we know, is a straight up 
brawler. We call Leo McKay the smallest brawler. Vice is going to give him a run uh, for his money for that title. But look at it. Oh, going for the senton. And SDC gets those knees up just in the nick of time. Vice off the ropes. SDC goes down. Oh, man, what a bicycle knee right to the chin. That beard isn't going to save you, Vice. You're going to have to work for it. Look at this. Jeez. What kind of submission? The ref is right there, though. And it's possible that Beard gives him the advantage in a move like that. Where SDC can't really get his arm all the way around the neck. Oh, super kick. And he falls down. One, two, no, and a two count. Holy cow. These guys giving it their all already. And SDC just collapsing on top of Vice for the pin. Vice now in control. No, SDC pounds it. And a running knee to the face. Vice is busted open. And quickly, SDC gets down for the pin. Oh, man, two and a half. Two and a half. Look at it. Oh, man, he's already bleeding. So you know his vision is somewhat impaired. Oh, here, here we go, stomping. It's Vice got playing. Dragging him away from the rope. Smart move there. Oh, man. Kick right into the hamstring. Look at this. Vice has him up. Falcon Arrow. Falcon Arrow from SDC. And the crowd is getting behind SDC. Look at that. Mimicking him. Oh. Vice dodges the knee. But SDC's quick. Quickly gets... Fireman carry reversed. Vice now has got SDC again. Are we going to throw him out? No. He's going to go for the 10 count on the top turnbuckle. The fans counting it out, and SDC stumbles to the center of the ring. My, oh, my. And Vice now, he's got hate. Oh, man. What a driver, a headlock driver there, or a snapmare driver. Uh, DDT, just a two count. Man, that was center of the ring. Vice is wondering what's what's happened, why he didn't get that one. SDC woozy and up on his feet. Vice behind him, talking a little smack, waiting for him to come to, and he pays for it. Look at this. Oh, clothesline finishes out that nice little flurry of punches. Uh-oh, look at this. Hooking the S Vice up, excuse me, in a sharpshooter. SDC hollering at the ref to ask Vice if he wants to tap, if he wants to give up. And Vice, no. SDC just drops him out of frustration. Holy cow, Vice stops the super kick. Big chop blocked in the right hand by SDC. And a jumping knee. Oh, wow. A backflip headbutt. That was interesting. And, oh, SDC gets pushed away. But it comes back quick with a couple of right hands. Vice on the ropes. Ducks down, goes, does SDC and another bicycle knee. And a pin. One, two, no. That one was even quicker than the last one. Vice not ready to give up. I don't blame him. There's a lot at stake here. Oh, boy. If SDC hits this running knee, and he does, that might be it for Vice. One, two, and it is. SDC with that running knee catches Vice and puts him down for the one, two, three. Well, folks, our finals are set. It is SDC taking on Duke Zenda. The winner becomes the number one contender for the Lone Star Championship. One hell of a matchup between SDC and Vice. Well, coming up right now, we've got a fatal 
four-way match between um, a lot of newcomers here in SWF. Introducing first Jackson Montgomery. That's right. The previous GM of Uprising, since we no longer have Uprising, has decided to become a part of our SWF roster. Here we go. Bang! The country bumpkin. The backwoods badass. The hick from the sticks, y'all. Jackson Montgomery making his debut here in SWF as an in-ring competitor. We're expecting a lot out of this man as he has been an OCW Online Championship Wrestling Champion. And um, he did recently hold the Future Investment briefcase, which is Money in the Bank, where he cashed in and lost, but nonetheless. Coming up next, this man was part of SWF a few seasons back when SWF was in a different part of the country. Zach Graves, ladies and gentlemen, this man, he's creepy, obviously. He, uh, he runs the Carnival of Lost Souls. If we could not have any more of the scariest people ever in SWF, that'd be great. I mean, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't hate that. We've got uh, Zach Graves now and Lord Draven, Evelyn Reeves. It's just, it's getting out of hand. Speaking of the darkness, and we spoke of this man earlier as the purple smoke fills the stage area. Kid Hades, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what his beef is with Leo. Uh, previously, he was unworthy. He deemed himself unworthy when he couldn't uh, get past Calypso in his bid for the, the uh, Rebellion Championship. Maybe attacking Leo is his road to redemption, his personal road to redemption. I don't know how kindly Leo is going to take to that. I mean, that is, that's a serious thing to do. One, to basically, you know, handpick the people you're going to take on in your, on your personal road. But to do with Leo McKay, I mean, oh man. And from Fort and another newcomer this season, your boy from the the FWTX, that Fort Worth, Texas, another Texas boy, along with Jackson Montgomery and along with myself, and we are here in the South for situations as such to pick up great talent like Jackson Montgomery, like John Robb. Oh, geez, look at this guy. Kid Hades looking fantastic this year, and there's John. We're going to get this fatal four-way on the road. Now, there are no elimination. This is not an elimination-style matchup. First to pin wins, and Jackson gets face-planted right into the mat in a second time. Look at John. Nice job there. Little back body drop slam. Oh, John's going to send Zach down to the mat as Jackson does the same with Kid Hades and John's taking out the legs of Zach Graves. Out on the outside, a kick to the midsection of Jackson Montgomery. There's a whole lot going on right now. Big spinning elbow by Zach Graves and he's going to go outside. Oh, he's going under the ring. That can only mean this is an extreme rules match, baby. In there with a chair and he goes and goes for the swing and misses Oof, not that time. Hits Jackson Montgomery right in the midsection and then throws the chair outside the ring. These guys all in a huge pile. Jackson and Zach going after Kid Haiti. Zach changes and goes after John. John not getting eliminated that easily. Look at Jackson, though. Nope, reversed by Kid Hades. Zach Graves going after John Robb big time. Jackson sent in Hades. Look at that Bulldog, very nice move. And then immediately goes after Graves, but John stops that. And then Jackson stops John's move. Interesting. Going for a clothesline, but John Robb stepped out of the way, it looked like. Working that arm over of Graves. 
And John says, boy, if you don't. And he goes down for the pin. No. Just a one count. That's going to be a big deal in this matchup. Trying to figure out when the perfect time is to get a pin because of that. That wasn't even a one count. And Graves stopped Hades from getting the pin. Look at John. Look at, oh my God, face buster. Big clothesline by Hades over there on Graves. Elbow shot to the face of John by Jackson. And Hades, look at this. We saw this plenty last season. Go to Hades. Pop-up cutter. And smart move, quickly going for the pin. John and Jackson in the mix of it. Oh, and Jackson takes out the ref. That's one way to break up a pin. John rolls outside the ring and a, jeez. Jackson just slams his backside right into Zach's face as he sat in the corner there. Two men in the ring. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Shootout, ladies and gentlemen. This one matchup is going. They're going to town on each other. You see a ladder there on the outside. It was not used. The ladder was pulled out and not used. Zach and Kid Hades in the ring now. Quick shout out to Renegade Wrestling. I'll leave their link down in the description below. Check them out. A lot of great stuff happening over there. A handful of SWF superstars are in Renegade. What a face buster there by Zach Katie Katie's kid Hades goes for the pin but Zach stopped that in a heartbeat Hades now is going to send Zach over the top rope and outside onto the floor and he follows quickly John Robb now look at oh my goodness look what he's doing to Jackson Montgomery he has an extreme rules matchup there are no rope breaks but pinfalls and submissions are still viable. And they break up that submission so John doesn't get the victory that easily. Kick to the midsection of John by Hades. Lots of, geez, these guys are going crazy in here. Knee to the face to the Savage. And he pushes Hades down this time. Jackson is laying in the middle of the ring. John is fired up, folks. He's going to pick up kid Hades oh man big reverse elbow there from John and Zach's gonna send him over uh oh look at this assisted neck breaker there from the ropes one two and Hades is able to kick out of the pin by Jackson Montgomery my goodness Zach Graves now nope Jackson is not having that throwing those big elbows and he turns his back on Graves. Doesn't seem to matter as Jackson catches Graves. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Hades, though, with the reversal. It looked like Hades going for a drop kick, possibly. Nice zigzag there from Graves. And just a one count. Man, oh, man. These, it, the pin is going to have to be incredibly and perfectly timed. Oh, shotgun dropkick 
by Kid Hades. And now John's going to take advantage and stomp a mud hole in Graves. Quickly goes after Hades. Look at this. Got him up. Way up. Power bomb by John Robb. The Savage goes for the pin. This might be the perfect opportunity to do so. And it is. Zach Graves unable to get up and Jackson unable to get back into the ring. The Savage John Robb gets the victory. Here's My goodness. Winner, this man Mr. comes in John here. Robb. Debut match is a fatal four-way matchup and he gets the victory. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, the Savage John Robb. Well, coming up next, folks, we have the another eight-man battle From royal. London, the winner of this matchup is going to face off against Jay Wolf, the winner of the first eight-man battle royal. After those two men battle it out, they will get a shot at Seb Abbott and the Maverick Championship. Now, four people have uh, already been selected to be in this match. Bruiser Brad, Evelyn Reeves, as you can see here, um, Jesse Newman, I believe, and there's one other person, Brett Storm. So uh, those four gentlemen are having their first matchups. The end for the other four gentlemen were in the Lone Star Championship tournament that lost. So it is going to be Ryan Adams, it is going to be Leo McKay, James Frost, and Mason Foster. Those four men, plus Bruiser Brad and Mason Foster being in the same match, I find that quite interesting. Leo McKay, Brett Storm, Evelyn Reeves, James Frost, and Jesse Newman. We get the introductions here and out of the way. I'm very excited. This is how we're going to end shootout this evening. Like I said, the winner of this matchup will face off against Jay Wolf. And the winner of that matchup will be facing Seb Abbott for the Maverick Championship at the pay-per-view. So a lot of stuff going on with who's facing who, the winners of what, all of that stuff. Eight men in the ring, and holy cow, Evelyn Reeves starting things off like a madman, it jumping crazily into the ring. Into the corner now. Brad already has somebody. Oh my goodness, over the top rope. Does Brad have Ryan Adams? There's a lot of stuff going on. It's going to be hard to uh, commentate a little bit as until we start getting rid of some people. And of course, Bruiser Brad, the biggest fool in this matchup. And close to Jay Wolf in size. Look at. Frost hopping over the top rope, but he quickly comes back in here. He is on the ring ropes. That's not a good area to be. And Brad hangs him out to dry. Leo and Jesse going out in the bottom left. Brett Storm and Evelyn Reeves sends Evelyn over the top rope. Whoa, but he hangs on. Mason Foster taking a break in the corner at the top left. Corner goes Jesse, and he gets out and shoots him. With, hits Leo. Look at Ryan Adams and Brett, or excuse me, Bruiser Brad in the top part of your screen here. And Ryan Adams has been eliminated by Bruiser Brad. Holy cow, not only eliminated, but just completely thrown over the top rope. Legs taken out of Jesse Newman. Mason Foster and Bruiser Brad going at it now. Interesting to see. And a low drop kick there to Brad. Pretty smart move. I mean, Mason Foster knows him better than anybody. They give up on each other and start going separate ways. And James and Jesse in the corner. Leo McKay and Mason Foster at the top, but Foster's going to get out of it. Can Jesse do the same? Oh, big clothesline to Brad. Jesse does get out of it. Seven men left. Here in the ring, Evelyn Reeves into the corner. Bruiser Brad eliminates Brett Storm. Huge clothesline sends Brett over the top rope and another clothesline to Jesse Newman. Evelyn Reeves and Leo McKay going at it in the upper corner. Jesse Newman and Bruiser Brad 
in the upper left corner and a big drop kick from James Frost to Mason Foster. My, my, look at Reeves just throwing, just throwing Leo McKay across the ring. Bruiser Brad and Jesse, uh-oh, Jesse over the top rope. So far, Bruiser Brad has eliminated three people. The only three people that have been eliminated so far. Oh boy, make it four. James Frost heads over the top rope. Bruiser Brad clearly has the advantage in his size. And now Mason Foster and Bruiser Brad pretty much trade opponents here. They're not gonna fight each other unless they absolutely have to. Look at Foster, he's got Leo, center of the ring with that double arm DDT. Evelyn Reeves on the corner now. Bruiser Brad got him up. Is he going? No, Evelyn stays on. Oh, but Bruiser Brad puts the boots to the chest of Reeves. And no, cannot do it. Evelyn Reeves and Bruiser Brad, Mason Foster and Leo McKay. Leo McKay might be making a comeback. Lost his first round matchup to Duke Zenda. Mason Foster lost his matchup to Ryan Riley. We saw those two gentlemen go at it tonight. Duke getting the win. Oh my goodness, Bruiser Brad has eliminated Evelyn Reeves. There were three. Brad's gonna toss Leo over and look at Bruiser Brad. Brad taking advantage of this leader mistake. My goodness. Foster now. Uh oh, Brad's out of it, slaps the hand away. Look at Leo McKay. Hurricane Rana on the big man. Oh my gosh. You don't see that very often. He's gonna roll over to the, the uh, apron there and take a break. Bruiser Brad has eliminated literally everybody from this matchup. And just as I'm saying, a super kick to Mason Foster. Leo McKay just kicked Foster's head clean off his shoulders and sent him over the top rope. And now he's going after Bruiser Brad. Brad, though, tries to get back in. Leo not having it. Look at Leo pushing and using all of his strength. Good Lord. Bruiser Brad sends Leo flying across the ring. Another Hurricane Rana to the big man. This is insanity. This is insanity. Leo McKay, he's got Bruiser Brad up. Sends him over the top rope again. Misses with that punch. And a second right hand, third, no. Bruiser Brad punches Leo McKay square in the jaw and sends him center of the ring and there it is. That might be it for Leo McKay, but he seems to be fighting out of it. Shot to the lower back. Kick to the midsection here. Bruiser Brad positioning Leo McKay. Look at this, and over the top goes Brad, or excuse me, goes Leo McKay as Bruiser Brad just eliminated the last competitor. And we have seen it time and time again. Bruiser Brad and Jay Wolf, they're gonna face off to see who faces Seb Abbott for the Maverick Championship. Thank you so much everybody for watching. Don't forget to come back next time for more SWF Shootout.